What's up guys, once again it is mp4podcast.com bringing you guys some of the most interesting video game news that you guys really do need to know about. Now there's an article that I was reading right over at uh, Eurogamer.net and the article is The Secret Developers Wii U The Inside Story. Now it seems that it was somebody who worked at BioWare and they were producing one of the very first launch games which was Mass Effect 3 for the Wii U, and they talked about some of the hiccups that they had while de developing for the Wii U. Now, the Wii U is a very mysterious console and so on. It's made by Nintendo, as we all know. And Nintendo wanted the console to be very small, like the original Wii, and also they wanted it to be very quiet. Bells started ringing when the developers were in the conference room listening to the Nintendo rep. Uh, you know, these, all these developers, they had to sign NDAs. Like, they couldn't talk about what the meeting was. They couldn't do any interviews. But, you know, it, this is an anonymous uh, interview and so on. Also, the Wii U came out a little bit over a year. You know, about a year and 13 months or 12 months or so. And he said that Nintendo really wasn't very helpful with uh, them uh, getting any uh, tech support. They wanted to do some, you know, learn learn about more about the Wii U programming. I think they wanted to learn how to offset some of the program over to the GPU and some other things like that. And so they sent an email over to uh, to the Nintendo, and then Nintendo had to send it to Japan, and then it had to go through a translation department, and then the translation department had to ask the programmers in Japan. So then he said they got the email back from Japan, and it said it really didn't answer their question. So this took a week, one week, and that's a lot of time while you're programming and you're trying to get around these problems. So then they sent another email over to Japan, I mean, to, to Nintendo, then it goes back to the translation office, and the translation office asked the programmers, and then they got another answer, and it really wasn't that helpful at all. One of the main problems that I feel with the Wii U is that it's a foreign architecture, okay? It's some variation of a PowerPC slash Macintosh, old Macintoshes with the PowerPCs from IBM and so on, and a lot of developers aren't really that familiar with it. Now, it's not completely like a Mac. Like you can't probably disinstall OS, like an old version of OS 10, and get it up and running. It's probably not going to work like that because it is a, a little bit of an alien hardware compared to just regular Macs, for that matter. And that's why, you know, the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 are really being embraced so much is because of the x86 hardware now i don't understand why nintendo could not have done x86 hardware with the wii u i just don't understand it i mean was it because they wanted backwards compatibility with wii games but most people you know for the most part aren't really too concerned with playing last generation games on their new consoles. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of retro gamers out there that like to collect, and that's what they like to do is have a second machine for backup gameplay. Don't get me wrong, I do like that feature of being able to play my old games on the newer consoles, but, I mean, if something has to go to benefit the uh, console itself, I understand that. Nintendo needs to wake up to what is going on today in the development community, the software community, okay? Especially the software community. I remember the days of the Super Nintendo being one of the best consoles I've ever owned in my life. And it probably still is one of the best consoles I've ever owned in my life. I mean, I just love Super Nintendo. If you guys, you know, were, you know, are a little bit too young or, you know, don't, never had a Super Nintendo, the Super Nintendo was was amazing, okay? It really was. Everybody was pumping out games left and right. Don't get me wrong, the Sega Genesis was no slouch e either with third-party support. But after that, Nintendo just lost it, okay? Nintendo 
don't get me wrong, Nintendo is a very smart company. However, they are just in a very wacky way of thinking over there in Japan. They don't embrace fan films. They get uh, ants in their pants by sending DMC, uh, DMCA letters to people that want to do Zelda fan films, okay? They get mad at people who want to do Let's Play videos of Nintendo games. I mean, uh, could Kombami, I can't remember, Kombami45, whatever his name is, Ghost Robo, those guys have been hit with claims after claims after claims, Scott Games. Um, also, Nintendo needs to wake up to what people are doing today, either in the programming field or here on YouTube. And right now, the Wii U is not in a very good position. It has to be somewhat repaired. And I don't really know how to repair the Wii U. Okay? Either they have to have a Nintendo YouTube channel for programmers to help them, you know, learn the SDKs better. That's like the plugins or the programs or whatever and how to utilize the software. BioWare wanted to really offload some of that you know, work over to the GPU, but it was coming down at crunch time, and they didn't really have the support from Nintendo, okay? When I went to PAX East, I talked to a developer. Um, I can't I can't remember if he worked for EA or Ubisoft. I can't remember. I think it was EA, but he was talking about EA. Uh, I believe it was up in Montreal. They had a whole studio guarantee. You know, I mean, just making Wii games. That's all it was. I think they, maybe it was like one of the Dead Space games they made for the Wii. And they didn't sell any games for uh, for the Wii. Because, you know, they thought it was going to be a big hit because, you know, their software line was going to be huge and so on with sales coming out of the yin-yang and so on. But nobody was buying them. Nintendo is a is a really good company. They They understand the portable market better than anybody else. But I'm going to tell you the truth about Nintendo. Nintendo messed up when they were working on the next console after the Super Nintendo, before even, anybody even knew it was the N64. They got into, you know, uh, two deals with Philips and Sony making a CD add-on for the Super Nintendo. And I think they scratched that and they were going to make an N64 with a CD. Then they decided not to do that and go cartridge-based. By going cartridge space, it completely for <clears throat> for for from from the N sixty four all the way up to now, it has completely changed the marketing philosophy of Nintendo. For, for some reasons, for the better, and some for reasons for the worse. Let me just explain what I'm talking about here. All right, when they went cartridge based, a lot of third parties started to drop support for their. Uh, N64, because it was too expensive to develop for cartridge-based games. It was, you know, N64 games were $70, while PlayStation 1 and Sega Saturn games were $50, okay? It was a, it was a, 20, a $20 markup on those games. Now, you're probably saying, well, the N64 um, was, was cheaper. That is true, but after, you know, owning the, a console for five years... 20 bucks and 20 bucks here and there. I mean, you're going to get your money back anyway and also save on future titles. <clears throat> but what happened with Nintendo was they developed, I believe, Pokemon, which, you know, was a great game for Game Boy and so on. And then they just started marketing their IPs, their IPs, their IPs, everything. And they were very successful at, the, at that. And the portable market really did become their bread and butter. But however, after that, they have completely lost faith with third third party third party support. The GameCube wasn't that bad, however it wasn't great. Okay? Small CDs, you know, where they couldn't fit as much data <coughs> as the PlayStation 2 or the original Xbox. Okay? Then they bring out the Wii U. It has, you know, this new type of controllers, and it's really fun to play, but it's underpowered. Now they do this tablet thing. I think Nintendo has what Nintendo has to do is they need to bring a system that has decent power. I mean, we all know for the most part the PlayStation 4 is 
you know, more powerful than the Xbox One. Some people can make the argument, well, maybe if the Xbox One is programmed this way, the Xbox One can be more powerful. Let me tell you something. It doesn't make any difference which console of those two are more powerful. Because they're so damn close to each other, it doesn't make any difference. The Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3, yeah, you know, um, the GPU in the Xbox 360 is better, but guess what? The CPU in the PS3 is more powerful than the CPU, even though it's more harder to program for. But you understand what I'm saying. They have to be somewhere close enough to be able to really compete. And people will buy their games because they do have the great first-party games, the Marios, the Donkey Kongs, the Zeldas, and so on. But if they build a really nice system, right, even if they had it sold for $400, the third parties will jump on board. As of right now, all the third-party games that have come out of Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed, we haven't gotten any DLC for those uh, for, for those titles. For the, the last DLC that I know that we got for the Wii U was Injustice. And guess what? We didn't even get the new version of Injustice. They skipped out on us. Nintendo needs to wake up to what is going on. They need to make consoles easy for developers who come out of college and who program on x86 if you come out of college you don't want to start learning some alien hardware okay that was one of the reasons why the ps3 a lot of those ports were so bad because people had to learn a brand new way of programming so nintendo needs to change their ways so once again ladies and gentlemen this has been mp4podcast.com signing out if you want to read the article it's a very long article but i thought i'd just give my twist on it my opinion on it i'll leave the link in the description box of this video once again guys this has been mp4podcast.com and stay toasty it's pretty cold outside later guys bye